Hello Zero Books readers and viewers, it's me again, Douglas Lane, and in this video I'm going to be discussing the never-ending culture war, and why, despite my desire for it to be otherwise, we can't ignore it any longer. In this one, I'm going to be discussing the 1983 film Local Hero, Christopher Lash's ideas about the family from his book Haven in a Heartless World, and I'll take an excerpt from the new Zero Books title The End of the End of History in order to explain why culture matters even if only symptomatically, and in order to clear my head after a long personal crisis. The cultural conflict between social conservatism and liberal progressivism in politics is an ideological reflection of a real material conflict in the world, a contradiction in modern life that runs through every sector, every demographic, every geographic locale. The framing of the conflict along political lines as a contest between Christian conservatives and cosmopolitan liberals misses the fact that the values of the conservatives and the progressive ideals of the liberals are both necessary and are both put at risk due to this contradiction. Rather than looking to talking heads and politicians, we can get a better understanding of the difficulty we're in by considering how this contradiction between tradition and progress appears or appeared in art. For example, Bill Forsyth's 1983 independent film, Local Hero, offers a gentle and charming way to think through our collective and my personal conflict. It was about an, an oil man, uh, or rather a Scots accountant actually, who in his part time negotiated probably the best deal that the, that the British National Oil Corporation ever, ever negotiated. And it was just this weird idea that, and they used to have to break off negotiations while the members of his council who were farmers went off to milk the cows and everything else. And the idea of these Americans from, I think it was Texaco in that particular instance, having to sit around up in the Hebrides while the, while the people they were negotiating with went about their daily chores and then came back to the negotiating table, which was the village hall, I thought was a, a rich vein. And that's where we started. In the movie, the fictional town of Furness is presented as a Scottish utopia. The people there are rooted to the land, to their history, and to each other. And while their world together is small, is not parochial, but rich. The protagonist, on the other hand, is an oil executive from Texas. He's a jet setter whose apartment is set above the Houston skyline. He is cut off from himself and others. He is shown talking to his colleagues from behind glass. He is always on the phone. Read on its surface, the film is clearly a celebration of the simplicity of village life and a condemnation of the complexity and alienation of the modern world. But it is not just that. When taken in its entirety, the movie offers the viewer a kind of solution. The movie could not exist but for the conflict between the Texan oil man and the villagers. There would be no movement, no development, except for the starting point of modern alienation. And rather than suggesting that Furness is an alternative to Houston, by the end of the movie, we receive a moment wherein Furness is in Houston we are offered the feeling of melancholy as a happy ending for the film. We are given permission to enjoy the way a rooted life is denied to us. It would be easy to decide that Local Hero is fundamentally a conservative movie. Its soft critique of capitalism not only relies on a fantasy version of rural life, but ends up as an ode to tourism. The last shot can be seen as capturing the rewards of a good vacation. However, on the level of affect, the film's compensations are, from my point of view, necessary. We need supplements like these as we lose our rootedness, as we contend with lifelong alienation. The culture war rages on, and Forsyth's charming little movie has largely faded from memory. And yet, the need for these sorts of supplements becomes more pronounced every day. And it's in this way that the culture war matters, and it demonstrates why both sides get it wrong. What's needed are not just sets of rules of conduct or religious doctrines. What's needed are not human rights and the expansion of individual liberty. But rather, what we need is a sense of security, the kind of security that a film like Local Hero brings to the screen. The sense that even if you end up trapped behind glass, that somewhere there are real people living real lives together. Another supplement to our modern alienation 
is the nuclear family, or the notion of it. But whereas a film like Local Hero might temporarily calm the viewer, might create a sense that life as it is can be meaningful, even beautiful, if not everywhere, then at least somewhere, life within the nuclear family often produces the opposite sensation. As Christopher Lash explained in his 1979 book, ha Haven in a Heartless World, family life has become painful and marriages have become fragile. In fact, it is precisely because the family became a haven, precisely because men and women were meant to take refuge within it, that it became so fragile as an institution. It was only in the context of a generalized alienation from society that marriages based on romantic love could arise and that private family life could be seen as a refuge. As Lash wrote, at bottom, the glorification of private life and the family represented the other side of the bourgeois perception of society as something alien, impersonal, and abstract, a world from which pity and tenderness had fled in horror. Deprivations experienced in the public world had to be compensated in the realm of privacy. Yet, the very conditions that gave rise to the need to view privacy and the family as a refuge from the larger world made it more and more difficult for the family to serve in that capacity. The family as we know it can be seen as a symptom of the alienation that capitalism produces. The family both relies upon and is sometimes ripped apart by that world of alienated production. But just as in the movie Local Hero, the symptom can't simply be overcome. The symptom has a function. It both makes modern conditions bearable and it provides a place from which to begin to imagine another sort of life, a different relationship to society. This again points out how both conservative and progressive liberal politics cannot address today's cultural problems. Conservatives want to protect the family from supposedly outside forces that are, in fact, endemic to it, whereas progressives want to simply get rid of the family as a symptom and replace it with the sort of egalitarian relationships that can only be accomplished by either the state or the market. That is, progressives only seem to want to push the process of alienation forward. They deny the stabilizing and humanizing function that even families under siege and dissolution can still, in fact, provide. But perhaps all of this analysis is as dated as my pop culture reference, as dated as local hero. In their book, The End of the End of History, Alex Hochuli, George Hoare, and Philip Cunliffe note that it has been a long time over 50 years since our culture wars were fought over sexuality, religion, and the family. Today, these wars are more closely linked to changing economic circumstances, linked with globalization, immigration, and identity. But if this is true, then our prospects for truly radical social change are grim indeed because of people with no social connections except through the state or the corporation, a people who can't talk to each other except by haggling over what terms should be used in reference to their always shifting identities, will never find the self-discipline or personal stability they need in order to organize and fight together. If you enjoyed this conversation, please do consider supporting us on Patreon. Our patrons help to make sure that Sublation Media can continue to provide interviews, videos, books, and articles that are critical of the left from the left. If you are tired of remaining stuck within bourgeois ideologies and politics, help us sublate them both.